Are you or someone you know looking to buy or sell a home? When you use a HomeGain Realtor to buy or sell a home, you can get $150. Visit HomeGain.com and click on the Promo 150 banner at the top of the page to get started. Compare HomeGain Realtors and choose your favorite. Complete your home purchase or sale transaction with the HomeGain Realtor, and HomeGain will pay you $150. Get started today by going to HomeGain.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Real Estate 360 Live. I'm your host, Ryan Sloper. Joined today by my guest, Louis Camarosano, the general manager of HomeGain. A quick reminder, the show is designed and dedicated to building the Washington, D.C. Metro's housing and credit markets one house at a time. If you ever have any questions, concerns, or real estate needs, the best number to reach out to us is 877-245-2030. That's 877-245-2030. Or visit us via the web at realestate360live.com. That's realestate 360 live.com on the right hand side there's an ask a question button just feel free to click that put in your contact information and i'll be glad to get back in touch with you if it's something even if if i can't help you out i'll be glad to put you in touch with the person that can um it's time for this week's market movers and this segment was brought to you by home gain home gain is the place to get you started buying or selling a home finding a realtor and getting real estate questions answered if you go to homegain.com today you can see exactly what i'm talking about all you have to do is type in your home's address, and you'll get an instant free estimate of your home's value online. It's a great way to monitor your home's value, and it's totally free. So, guys, when you get a chance, check that out today at HomeGain.com. So I want to let you guys know what's ahead this week that could affect interest rates and move them up or down one way or the other. Like I said, they're at historically low levels. Um, this week's the key economic data uh, tomorrow, sep- September Consumer Confidence Index will come out on Wednesday. August new home sales will come out. Thursday is the August durable good order and weekly claims. Friday is the August personal income and spending. Um, and also we have the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment. Obviously, we still have a lot of focus on What's going on in Europe? It's a mess over there in Europe. Um, I believe that uh, there's some focus this week that will go on what Spain's actual intentions were, asking the ECB to buy some of its debt. Uh, So there was going to be a lot of focus on that. Um, Also, you know, I believe it was German Chancellor Merkel and French President clashed two days ago over the timetable for the starting uh, starting point oversight of Europe's banks. So a lot of the discord that's going on in these region is forcing money back out of, uh, out of Europe and putting stuff back into U.S. treasuries and German bonds. We're going to, you know, continue to be the safe haven, even though I, you know, Lewis and I, both of you and I agree that we're not necessarily this, we wouldn't put our money here, but that's where the majority of the rest of the world is putting their money. And, It's going to continue to, you know, we're going to continue to see a low interest rate environment for an extended period of time. We don't know how long that's going to go for. But, you know, while all this is taking place for the people that are out there that are searching for homes right now, that are that are looking to refinance into a new 30 year fixed rate to protect themselves from the future inflation that that that's, you know, going to rear its ugly head at some point. You know, there's opportunities to be had now. Unfortunately, not everybody can buy a home. As I was mentioning, you know, just a segment earlier, while interest rates are extremely low and the Fed and and, and the president and everybody else is like, you know, trying to really push, hey, you know, buy a home and, you know, it can really help stimulate the economy. You know, there's probably, you know, 50 percent of the people are getting turned down that are even applying for these loans. Uh, Obviously, in the D.C. metro area, we're a little bit more isolated from the rest of the country. We have uh, a completely different job situation here. Jobs are much more plentiful. Um, There are higher paying jobs. So people are, you know, able to buy a home and in some cases with little to no money out of pocket. Uh, I know one of the biggest questions that we have or, you know, okay, that's great. You know, I've been renting for two or three years and I want to buy, but I, I don't have any way to save up 20% to put down on a home. Well, the fact of the matter is that's just not true. You don't need 20%. Um, Obviously, things are – you need to really take in your entire situation into account here. You need to know, okay, well, what are your credit scores? You know, have you been making all your payments on all your credit cards, auto loans, and everything for an extended period of time? Most people don't even have the slightest idea of where their credit scores are, okay? So that tends to give them pause when they have a a lender – pull their credit for the first time trying to apply for their first home loan. Um, 
because they don't know what's on there. They they may think, you know what, I'm just going to hold off for another five or six months while I try to get all my credit in order. Um, <laughs> majority of the time when somebody has their credit pull, it's not as bad as what they thought it was or it's much worse than, than what they thought it was. And the best bit of advice that I can give everyone that's listening today is that, you know, if you're in a position you're considering buying, um, even if it's, you know, a year down the road from now, is to start looking right now. Talk to a professional now that can look at your situation, figure out what you can qualify for, and that way you're giving yourself some time to get any issues that you may need to have resolved resolved. Um, I mean, I can't tell you, Lewis, how many times people will, you know, go out and find an agent and the agent won't necessarily, you know, do the due diligence and follow up in the lender to make sure that they're fully qualified. And then all of a sudden they're having running into in a last second issue because they didn't know that that person had only been at their second job for six months. I mean, small, petty little things. I mean, it should be very clear if there's any extra things that need to be documented um, to make sure that that person qualifies for a loan. And it starts by you know, reaching out to professional early on. Don't wait until you're like, you know, two weeks away from wanting to buy a home to do that. Um, you need to be able to sit down, look over, you know, review your budget and figure out what, you know, what's going to be a realistic mortgage payment. I mean, I'm a big advocate for everybody out there. You know, just because a lender tells you that you're qualified for up to $300,000 doesn't mean you have to take a loan out for $300,000. That's what got us into the mess in the first place. That's if you're planning on maximizing your leverage so that you can sell and flip your house right away. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I think that during the housing bu- bubble that we had the last time, everybody was just like, well, great. If the lender says that I qualify for this, I must qualify for this. Right. You know what you I mean? Must, and you must take it and you must spend all of it. Exactly. And then lo and behold, you got into the house. That's great now. Now you don't have the money to furnish the house. You barely have enough money to pay for u- utility bills and groceries and everything else. And, you know, if anything, I mean, I think that we need more of a common sense underwriting approach. Um, obviously, we want a lot of people to qualify for loans. That's what the government's pushing right now. And, and Ryan, isn't that, you know, you're, you can qualify for that even without putting 20 percent down? Absolutely. I mean, that F- makes it even more dangerous to, you, to your finances, as you point out. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're a veteran, there's 100% financing that's available. Um, also, gov- the government offers through FHA or HUD a three and a half percent down payment. Uh, if, if you live in Virginia, there's the Virginia Housing Development Authority, which they'll um, actually kick in a grant for the three and a half percent down payment. So you, it's really virtually nothing. Obviously, credit scores uh, are applicable in, in certain scenarios, but you need to find out what those scenarios are. I mean, at the end of the day, if you can lock yourself in sub 4% interest rates for little to nothing out of pocket and protect yourself from rising rents and future inflation, it makes sense to do that. I mean, we're talking, you know, rates that are down. I mean, in some cases, I want to say that the Freddie Mac average for an FHA or or, uh, rather the FHA 30 year fixed average was somewhere around like 3.35% last week, Lewis. I mean, it's insane. I still – every time I look at the, the the interest rates, I'm kind of like just amazed. I'm like, okay, this 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 has got to be too good to be true. It's got to be too good to be true, but it's not. And the fact of the matter is that there's people out there um, that are still sitting on the sidelines, believe it or not, thinking that one day they're just going to go to like 1%. It's, that's not going to happen. I mean obviously we've, I didn't think that they would go as low as they are now, but it comes a point in time where the, you know, the, it doesn't make any fin- financial sense for a bank to lend out at a certain level. Um, I feel like we're at that level now. We're at that level. A matter of fact, um, the Federal Housing Finance Agency just came out and said that they are getting ready to institute another guaranteed fee. Okay. Well, basically, you know, for you out there that are trying to obtain a mortgage, what it really means is, is that this additional guaranteed fee that they're going to tack on for the servicing of these loans and the selling off of loans later on is going to be reflective in their in the actual rate sheet. So. What it really means is that you could have a potential higher interest rate by an eighth to a quarter percent once this fee is implemented. This starts as of November 1st. So, Lewis, it goes back to what you and I have discussed many times. It's like, okay, so it's great that the Fed's doing all these things to try to keep interest rates low. But on the back side, Congress and everybody else is trying to implement more and more fees. So it just raises them right back up. Yeah, they're they're really – they're not – as we mentioned earlier, if they wanted to put people to work, they could just 
make up jobs and use this money to get people jobs. Um, they can use the money to get forgiveness for people in their homes. They're not. This is this QE3 is just meant as a bailout for the banks and Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. It's not really helping anyone. No, it's not helping anyone. And the people, you know, if you not look like at anyone, it's not helping potential home purchases or home sellers. Although it probably, you know, they can't hold back all of it. I mean, some of it will get lent out, and some people will benefit from it. But again, it'll be the people that are more credit worthy, the people that aren't really struggling to begin with. And and, and many of the rich. I mean, right. the fact of the matter is, is that the rich are the ones that have have solid credit. Majority of them, they've yep. got they've got uh, you know huge incomes that they can show on paper that can allow them to qualify. I mean, they can buy investment properties with twenty twenty to twenty five percent down all day long. So they can buy, you know, when most families are just happy to have one house, they can go out there and buy, you know, 10, 15, 20 of them. Right. So you have the whole plan in reverse that somehow these policies that the government came up were designed to get everybody into houses, affordable houses. What you have now are foreigners buying the houses. You have investors buying the houses that used to be owned by the people, and now they have to rent from them. And and what's interesting about that as well, Lewis, is that you know with this low interest rate environment, you have more and more investors buying these houses. So it's not necessarily people that are looking to just move in and live in them. The home prices are actually rising relatively fast, especially in the DC metro area. So it's but it's not like that. These are you know first time home buyers, all of them that are able to see these gains. It's the it's the rich that are, are buying up a lot of it. And I would see I would venture to say that this is likely to continue. Um, the, you know, more and more people, I mean, if we just look at the basic math, I mean, there's what, about 11 million homeowners that are still underwater, about one in every three people. And you look yeah, up. Yeah, and they're still, they're going to, whether you do QE3, 5, 7, whatever, they're still going to be underwater. Yeah, it, it, that's not going to change. I mean, you, you would need another, you know, prob- for some people, you know, another 50% appreciation to get them back to the levels that they could get out of their current house. Right, but those houses at that, at those levels, we're not sustainable because who in their right mind would pay six hundred thousand dollars for a home that's eighty miles to the nearest city and is now worth one fifty? That's not going to happen. Yeah, it, it, it's it's not going to happen. Unfortunately, there are you know there that are should have happened in the first place. Yeah, and, and but you know for those people that are stuck in your homes and you're trying to find a solution, a short sale may be an option for you. And I'll let you know when we come back why you should consider doing that before the end of this year. When we come back, stay right there. 